Intermolecular forces um, have several different effects. Obviously, just the existence of solid and liquids are due to intermolecular forces, but we've got some other things also, um, the surface tension, viscosity, and capillary action. Here's um, a photograph of a spider web with condensed liquid on it, condensed water on it. And the water is forming these little tiny spheres, these little tiny droplets. This is a picture of a paper clip floating on water. That doesn't seem reasonable, does it? Because metal is more dense than water and it should just sink to the bottom. But the surface tension of the water kind of forms like a little skin on top. Have you ever had some pudding that got left in the fridge without being covered and the top of it kind of gets a skin on it, right? And it's harder to get your spoon through. So the surface tension sort of forms a little skin on the top of the water. And if you don't have any impurities and you put the paper clip on very carefully, you can get the paper clip to float. You could also do this with a needle. Other things that float on, surf on the surface tension of water are things like um, trout flies, right? Or water skater bugs. You may have seen, you know, in a quiet area of water, you can see these little bugs and they're just skating on the water. How are they doing that? It's the surface tension. So surface tension is the tendency of liquids to minimize their surface area. Um, of course, it can be measured and it would be quantified as the energy needed to increase the surface area by a particular amount. We're not gonna worry about that. So here we have a two-dimensional illustration of some liquid molecules. And we're looking at the interactions between these molecules. So the surface molecules are gonna have attractions with the molecules next to them and below them. Whereas the interior molecules are going to have interactions with molecules all around them. So in this illustration, this guy has interactions with six neighbors, and this is interacting with only four neighbors. In order to increase the surface area, more of these molecules are going to have to be at the surface and have fewer interactions with their neighbors. That's going to raise the energy, and nature doesn't like that. So liquids are going to arrange themselves so they have the smallest possible surface area, and th that shape is a sphere. This is actually a picture of that same guy from the video. Um, so here he has some water up on the space station, and it's just a big sphere. It's a ball of water, and you don't have to do anything special to, to it. Just, you know, put the water th out there and leave it alone. It'll make a sphere because it minimizes the surface tension. Um, that's why on the spider web, all these little droplets are nearly perfect spheres. These are not perfect because of gravity. And the larger the drop, the more distorted it is by gravity. But without gravity, it would make a, a perfect sphere. Viscosity is another, well, any questions about surface tension. Visco viscosity is another um, thing. <laughs> um, so viscosity is um, described as the resistance of a liquid to flow. It also has units and can be measured. We're not going to worry about that. Viscosity is how thick a liquid is. So if you think of honey, versus water, right? Honey is a liquid, but it pours really slowly, right? It doesn't like to flow. Water is not thick. Water flows easily. So honey has high viscosity, high resistance to flow. It pours slowly. Water has low viscosity. The viscosity is going to depend on the strength of the intermolecular forces. So 
Stronger intermolecular forces will predict higher viscosity. Okay, so then why is the honey uh, more viscous? Well, it's, you, you can't compare apples to oranges, right? So there's also the effect of the shapes of the molecules and their sizes. So here we can look at a series of hydrocarbons. Um, as they get bigger, the viscosity increases. And part of this is because we show these as straight lines, but really between each, um, at each carbon, there's a bend. And so this is more like a wiggly snake and it can curl around and then they can get tangled in into each other and, and that also will increase the viscosity. Viscosity depends on temperature. The higher the temperature, the more kinetic energy the particles have, the easier it is for them to slide past each other. So if you take honey and you warm it up, it gets thinner, right? And it's easier to pour. The maple syrup that you keep in the refrigerator is going to be thicker than if you leave it out on the counter. Um, so this, this is showing the viscosity of water at different temperatures. We see that as the temperature goes up, viscosity goes down. Um, this has some very important practical applications. Your car's engine needs oil in order for the moving parts to uh, not stick to each other, right? They need to be able to move with as little friction as possible. And your engine also gets hot, right? So the motor oil needs to be the right kind of motor oil. So at the operating temperature of your engine, it will be an appropriate viscosity. Because if it was too thin, it would just all run down into the oil pan and your engine would be damaged. If it's too thick, it's gonna act almost like glue and make it very hard for your engine parts to move. So synthetic oils are really pretty awesome. So those modern synthetic um, motor oils have polymers in them. And these polymers will coil up and make little ball shapes at low temperatures. And when you heat them up, they stretch out and unwind. And this moderates the change in viscosity due to temperature. Because the little balled up polymers at low temperatures don't stick to each other as well as the long spread out ones that can tangle with each other. So as the temperature goes up, they get more tangly and the viscosity doesn't change very much. So chemistry in your car engine. Any questions? Um, capillary action. Capillary action is the ability of a liquid to flow against gravity up a narrow tube. So here we have um, several different glass tubes. That is not blood, that's just red liquid. Um, and we see that if you touch the tube to the liquid, the, the liquid will travel up the tube. And the narrower the tube, the further the liquid will travel. Is going against gravity, what the heck? Well, there are two forces at work here. There are cohesive forces, which are the intermolecular forces between the molecules and the liquid that are holding it together as a liquid. And then you also have adhesive forces, which is forces of attraction between the liquid and the surface of the tube. So if the surface of the tube and the liquid are very attracted to each other, the liquid will creep up the tube. If they are not very attracted to each other, they will not, it will not creep up. The reason that this doesn't go up as high is because there's a lot more of the cohesive force only part in here, and so gravity has a bigger effect here. Um, in a small tube, more of the molecules will be able to participate in the adhesive force, and they're gonna climb up and they're gonna drag their friends with them.
this also explains the meniscus. So here we have a glass test tube with some water in it, and this is what we call the meniscus. The surface of the water there is curved, and now we can explain why. Because adhesive forces between the water and the glass cause the water near the edge to go up. This tube is too large to pull the water all the way up, but it'll pull the edges up and make it curved like that. So here we have adhesive forces being stronger than the cohesive forces. This is mercury. Mercury's meniscus is upside down. And that's because the cohesive forces between the mercury molecules are greater than the adhesive forces between the mercury and the glass. Mercury doesn't like the glass very much. So instead of coming up like water does, it actually goes down. It's like, I want to get away from that. And you'll see different shapes of a meniscus if you have like a, a plastic test tube versus a glass test tube, because some plastics um, are hydrophobic and some are hydrophilic. Some like water and some don't.